Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, I thought I'd start talking about some dynamics again. I talked about dynamics a long time ago as of this recording, and I said I was going to get back to it, but then I got sidetracked with lots of different things, and it's probably been a while now, and I haven't been back to dynamics in a while. So I thought I'd do a little bit of dynamics here. We're going to look in the Fields and Solvers menu, which can be found under the Effects uh, menu set. Fields and Solvers. And you see we have lots of things in here, but we're going to look at fields and creating them specifically. At the top here you see there's a section of this menu uh, blocked off with this title that says Create, and you can create these different kinds of fields. So that's what we're going to do. So let's just pick one at random. I guess we can do the first one. Makes sense, the Air Field. Now what is a field? A field creates a dynamic effect on an area and it's typically used with particle effects. So in order to visualize this field effectively, I think I need to create some particles in my scene. So I'm gonna to go to the In Particles menu here, and I'm gonna to go to In Particle Tool. Click that. I'm gonna double click it actually to open up the tool settings. and Reset my tool to get the default uh, values. So what I'd like to do is create a grid of particles. So I'm going to click the Create Particle Grid checkbox here, and I'm going to go down with the placement, I'm going to say with Text Fields. And I'm going to change this one's Y value to 0 and this one's Y value to 5. I want to hit Enter, go into my scene and hit Enter. Again, it will create this cube of particles. And you can kind of see all those little dots on the screen. I'll hide the grid for now and I'll turn off the tool settings. And if I hit Alt B, I can change my background color, try to find something that makes the particles a little more viewable. I can also select the particles, Control A to go to the attribute editor, click on the particle shape tab, let's go down here, and we can change the particle type. Instead of being points, maybe they are little spheres and say click the current render type button and I can change this radius down so they're not quite so large spheres. I can hold down control and left click on this text box and I can left click and drag to treat it like a slider. But we can get something like this. So the particles are a little thicker than they were as just points. Hopefully that doesn't make the screen on YouTube go crazy. But hopefully you can see I have this grid of particles in my scene here. So I'm going to select that grid, go to my Fields and Solvers menu, and let's choose the Air Field options. With the particles selected when I do this, it will apply the Air Field to the particles. I'm going to go in the Air Options here and Edit Reset Settings. So these are my default settings for the Air Field. There's lots of stuff in here that we can, that we're going to get to. Uh, but we have different things that we can look at. Wind, there's also wake, and fan. So for the sake of this video, we're going to kind of, if we click on these different options, you can see how it kind of creates these different presets for how the air field acts. So if you want to act like wind, you can click the wind button. Act like the wake of a boat in water, for example, you can click the wake button. And act like a fan, you can click the fan button. Hopefully that makes sense. So wind, wake, and fan. Let's just try wind. And let's just use the default values here for the wind air option and see what happens. So we'll click create. It creates this uh, air field object down here. And you can see in the channel box all those different air field settings are in here. All lots of different things. But let's uh, first go to my display UI elements. I'm going to bring my time slider into play because I need to play the animation for the air field to take effect. And then I'll go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. I want to look at my time slider preferences and see the playback speed. 
you see right now the playback speed is real time 24 frames per second I'm going to change this to play every frame because with particles what can happen is if your particles start calculating and taking up your computer's uh, resources then frames start getting skipped so if you tell it to play every frame it will slow the animation down in order to play every frame so you'll see the entire uh, effect of the particles so I click save so anytime I'm dealing with particles I usually say play every frame as opposed to play 24 frames per second so with that set and the air field is here and my particles are in the scene there let's just hit play see what happens whoa they go so they go whoosh up in the air let me uh, bring up my range slider we can increase the number of frames that we have available to something like 500 just so we have more uh, time to work with and I'll go ahead and hide the range slider again so there they go way up into the air <laughs> so if I select my air field again you can see over here in the settings lots of different things but let's go back to the fields and solvers air options and kind of see what's going on here the first setting here is magnitude the magnitude is the power of the field right now the magnitude is its default value of 5.0 so if you want it to be less powerful you could decrease that value more powerful increase it you have attenuation this works on the positioning of the fan uh, object in your scene and it will diminish the magnitude with distance from the airfield's actual object that's in the scene. You'll notice that the particles are kind of in a arcing pattern. So right now they're kind of mid push. The airfield is pushing them upwards and you'll see it's kind of an arcing motion. Instead of all going at the same speed, because there is attenuation, the magnitude is diminished further away from the field further away would be at the edge of the block of particles so the attenuation means the magnitude is the highest point right here above the part of the, the field let me rewind this here so you'll see the field itself is at the bottom middle of the uh, cube of particles so the particles that are right next to it are going to have the maximum effect from the magnitude which is a value of five and the particles that are furthest away on the outer edge of the cube are going to have a little bit of attenuation which means the magnitude is going to diminish from that with that distance from the source of the air so when I hit play and stop it again real quick you can see that there's like a dome effect on the base of this cube of particles so the magnitude is the strongest at the middle of the dome where it was closest to the airfield itself if I rewind this let's say I move my airfield over here hit play again and now if we look at our particle block you can see that dome of influence that kind of dome of uh, blank space is now centered over here the tip of that dome you can see and that's falling off this way toward the outer edge of the cube going this direction away from the airfield's position that's the attenuation value then we have direction X Y and Z and this is the direction of the airfield like the wind remember we're dealing with the wind setting here so this every, this is acting like wind and the wind direction is y1 which is up which is why the particles are moving upwards to begin with if we re rewind this and over here in the channel box look for our direction values here they are x y and z you'll see direction y is one but type zero here and actually press play right now you'll see nothing happens because there is no direction to the wind if I say let's say negative one in the X and negative one in Z this, it should then move in a diagonal direction uh, negative Z and negative X which would be this direction I believe hit play there they go so it's being pushed in that direction you can again see that attenuation effect with the magnitude applied to the airfield rewind that so the direction tells the wind in this case which way to blow let's move down we have speed that's how fast the wind blows the object away if we affect 
that value, speed of 0.5 right now, say 0.1. Makes it slower, of course, it will play. You can see it blows away much slower. This also kind of works in conjunction with magnitude, because again, magnitude is that power effect. If we change the magnitude down to one also, which is a low magnitude and a low speed, we're going to get a much slower effect, like this. So magnitude, again, is that initial power, and then speed is kind of affected by the magnitude in that way. Then we have inherent velocity. That's the amount of the field's velocity to add to the flow. Right now the velocity is at zero. Okay, so what I've set up here is to demonstrate inherent velocity. So we're talking about the inherent velocity of the field itself. So what I've done here is I've animated the field to move between these two spots here. You can see the little fan icon of the field itself moving. So I've animated the field. And rewind that back to frame one here. So inherent velocity now is set to zero. So my magnitude, I've lowered down to one, so it's a bit less, and hit play. So you can see as the field moves past the cube of particles, those particles are being affected. And I can increase that magnitude a little bit just to get better visualization here. All right, so there they go. And that's with the inherent velocity set to zero. Now if I change this inherent velocity to say two, rewind and play, you can see the difference. The particles suddenly flew that way because it's taking into account the movement of the field. All right, So the field's movement, if it's animated or attached to something, will have an effect with the inherent velocity increased on the particles. So because my field is moving, then the inherent velocity set to 2 kicks in and makes the field of particles react differently. If I take this inherent velocity again back down to zero, rewind and hit play, you can see that that movement of the field did not really affect the particle movement. So that's what inherent velocity is. So again, that's magnitude, attenuation, direction, speed, inherent velocity. And those are the kind of the basic settings that you usually will deal with when working with air, the air field. And again, we're using the wind settings. So I think I'm going to pause the video there. We're going to come back to the air field. I think we're going to do part two and look at more of these settings as well as look at the wake and fan effect of the air field. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel, please feel free to like and subscribe, comment. Uh, again, sorry for the lack of videos in the last couple of weeks. As of this recording anyway, I'm hoping to increase that rate going forward. So again, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.